Hi again, folks. I'm Greg Flynn, the Public Information Director here with the City of Pearl, and welcome in to this episode of This Week in Pearl. On this episode, we'll bring in Mayor Jake Windham, who has a lot to talk about. We had a great city financial audit that we should all be very proud of, and he will tell us all about that. It is back to school time, and we're going to show you a well, a little reminder about passing school buses and why that's really not a good idea for so many different reasons as school will get started back up on Friday. Uh, we had a ribbon cutting for a well, kind of a rejuvenated business here in uh, Pearl and we'll take you out to that. And we'll also tell you about the Mississippi Braves coming back into town. They've been gone for two weeks, but they are still in first place and looking to keep it rolling as they'll have the Biloxi Shuckers in town next week and they've got some really great giveaways next week. All that and more coming up next on This Week in Pearl. Hello, I'm Mayor Wyndham, and I'm thrilled to show you the city creating its own future. Pearl is located in Rankin County, the fastest growing county in Mississippi, and there's no question why. Access to great schools, even better shopping, and unbridled beauty make Pearl a town that truly embodies its name. And with a truly exceptional team of first responders, public safety is another key component of our success. With fantastic housing opportunities from quaint suburban neighborhoods to gorgeous lakefront properties, there's a place for you here in Pearl. You can't beat the location. Right outside of Pearl is the crossroads of the south where Interstate 20 meets Interstate 55. From here you can travel anywhere within the state or the country. Or you can choose to stay right here in Pearl to enjoy a Mississippi Braves baseball game or experience the small town atmosphere, community pride, and heart of the local residents. All right, welcome back into This Week in Pearl. Once again, I'm Greg Flynn, the Public Information Director here with the City of Pearl, and we are honored to bring in Mayor Jake Windham, who is fresh off of a board meeting last night, and woo. Man, you had some uh, really cool things go on last night, some really good news, some really awesome things with the young people here in the city. Uh, but what I would like to start with is uh, what people are talking about on the streets, and that's this second round, or second wave, it appears, of COVID-19, this, this variant that's going around, which is uh, you know really taking its toll on our hospital system. So I guess from your view, what is it, from a 30,000-foot view at first, what is it that you want our citizenry to know? Well, I think that <clears throat> I think that our people have enough common sense and can think logically for themselves. And they understand the, um, um, you know, as far as personal hygiene goes, a long way. Uh, I'm not up in somebody's face constantly, uh, and uh, keep your distance. And if you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't want to wear a mask, that's fine too. But um, I think if you just make take safe measures and understand that those things are in place, uh, that can go a long way uh, as far as protecting yourself. Now, uh, you know, people will probably ding me up on this, and that's fine. I, I think that here we are. We have uh, the COVID vaccines out. I've received the vaccine. Uh, I've also received a flu shot. I understand each year the flu season comes around that the flu shot is – uh, approximately 50 something percent effective on keeping me from getting the flu but a lot of times you still get the flu people still get the flu and die people still get the vaccine the, the uh, coronavirus and some people unfortunately uh, you might pass away I, I just I don't want to sound morbid about it but I'm just saying that's the facts of life so I kind of uh, compare those two things together when we're talking about the the virus uh, again when we're talking about uh, other types of illnesses when, when it is viruses like that. It goes back to a, a lot of the times um, if you know someone's sick, stay away from them. Uh, and then again, practice personal hygiene and uh, I just believe that our folks in the city of Pearl know how to have some common sense and, and do what's right. I, I think that also from, from a, a leadership standpoint, uh, I'll, I'll stay in guidelines with our governor. I feel like that from a local uh, county and then and then to state uh, I feel like that's a chain of command uh, for myself and um, I think that the other elected officials in uh, Rankin County are going to follow suit well you did a uh, I, I think it, it's fair to say that our leadership led us through the first wave and we did quite well you know simply with the messaging of watch out for yourself watch out for your neighbor 
you know, don't get too close, wash your hands, keep it away from your face. So none of our folks, you just mentioned it, uh, to be clear, there are no and no foreseeable mandates in the city of Pearl. No, um, I'm not. I don't operate that way. I mean, I'm a, I'm a conservative guy. You know me well. Uh, again, people have different viewpoints, and I'm, I'm not against their particular viewpoints. This is where I, I think that we need to lead and make sure that um, make sure that our people understand that we're, we're not going to be sending out um, mandates. On, on anything without the city of Pearl. Um, I think that we're just gonna continue to monitor and try to make good decisions based on data. Well, we have the the opportunity. They've, they've reinitiated the uh, free COVID testing here at the Rankin County Health Department, which is located right behind City Hall. So if you wanna get a test, uh, that is free. If you feel like you may have been exposed or you might have COVID, uh, go online, we've got that link. Uh, on our website, we've shared it all on our social media. Uh, if you'd like to go and get a free COVID test from the Rankin County Health Department, as well as the vaccines, because the, the state health department has made the vaccines available to anybody that wants it uh, free of charge. And right. that I think is very helpful. It, it is helpful. So uh, I think that, uh, again, there's a lot of personal choices out here on this. I mean, I, I feel really strongly about personal choice of someone uh, want to get the vaccine. I personally did get the vaccine. If you want to get the vaccine, you're having trouble uh, trying to find a location that you can get vaccinated. Again, the health department behind Pearl City Hall, they can accommodate you there. And um, I, I think from our standpoint, as I just prayed it, uh, things don't get out of control as far as the, uh, the health care system. I do know that unfortunately, when the first round of COVID came through, they laid off a lot of hospital workers. Uh, so now we're seeing long waits at hospitals, and I don't quite understand why our people in the metro area are suffering from having to stay or wait a long time before being seen by a physician. Um, and th this is good data. They need to hire up some health professionals. Definitely. They're low. And um, I understand what, what payroll does at times. It makes the bottom line look a lot better. But when you're talking about uh, actually servicing people and treating people, we uh, we we had one of our aldermen's uh, wives was injured not too long ago. She hit her head and she sat in an emergency room for seven hours with a head injury. Oh my lord! Now, <laughs> to me, uh, there's no excuse for that. Which if if that was Kristen, my wife, I'd be really upset, especially on a head injury. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't want to get on off on another on a, on a on a tangent or anything, but. Number one, yeah, we got to keep ourselves safe. Number two, though, these hospitals need to staff up. They need to do what needs to be done to make sure they can treat our people in the metro area. Because a lot of times those numbers can be, you know, deceiving that all of our ICUs and the hospital beds are full, but if it's at a lower capacity. Right, know, and, and what I'm being told by health professionals is they have the capacity as far as the room. They don't, they don't have, have anybody... the people to treat the, yeah. treat the folks, and that's... That's upsetting when you when you know it to be true, and not, I do have that on, on good authority. Excellent. Well, you know, we just wish everybody well. Do the best you can. Um, certainly protect yourself, protect your family in the best way that you see fit. And we got through the first wave, and uh, under the leadership that we have here, not only of the mayor, but our board of aldermen, that I have a feeling that we're going to be just fine getting through this second wave. Yeah, I feel confident we'll, we'll do well. All right, let's talk about some more fun stuff. Now, last night at the board meeting, you got a chance to swear in a fresh batch of new mayor's youth council. They are some rising seniors in the Pearl uh, High School, and they get to do all kinds of community projects and you know really just show their leadership skills here in the city. And there was a big smile on your face as you were administering that. Yeah, yeah those, it's, it's always great to work with those uh, young people. And it's actually juniors, too. You're eligible to be on the Mayor's Youth Council as a junior in high school. And what we've done, too, I mean, sometimes people get into clubs or activities um, or involved in an organization where I just let me sign my name. So when I came into office and, and um, we submitted a day or we actually created a eight page application for the mayor's youth council and also they have an interview process and what we're doing with that is i mean we're just trying to give these uh young people soft skills to go ahead and prepare yourself uh, as as you go into college into the workforce if you're trying to achieve a goal or try to um, get hired in a position 
basically you have to come in and do those things as well. You have to have an application. You got to complete one correctly. And then you, you have an interview after that. So we just feel like that we're feeding right into what they're going to be seeing as they go through school. But uh, some of these are some of our best and brightest. And during my last four years, um, it's been a great honor to work alongside some of these kids. Some of them are so brilliant and so giving and always want to be just put back into Pearl, put back into Pearl. You know, I've had uh, two or three of them say that they want to be mayor here one day. And, you know, it, that does my heart uh, does my heart good because you want to see your people come back and reciprocate and uh, provide and make a community better than um, as they get older and when they become adults. That's that's an important that's an important thing. And Pearl has a has a good amount of people that like to do that. That are self invested, and then like yourself, Greg. I mean, uh, you really learn to love the city. You're not Absolutely. originally from here, but you're a Pearl Pirate now, and um, what we've when we can't get people that are um, naturally from here, then they're adopted in, and then the people that are naturally here, like these kids that go through high school and come back, the only thing they're going to do is improve the community and provide better ideas than, than than what I would have or what the board of aldermen would have. So it's just investing in ourselves, and they probably do close to 30 events a year, and so they stay pretty busy. And you got to take in consideration that most of these uh, young people that are junior seniors on the mayor's youth council. They're in Beta Club, Key Club, uh, National Honor Society. They're in every other club that's going on, taking college classes already. Many so, of them in athletics. So, uh, you know, I heard band. one, which I was, uh, I, I did not have to plan my schedule to hang out with my friends. <laughs> Some of these kids literally have schedules like hang out with Jake at 2 p.m. I mean, I'm thinking to myself, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's almost like they already have a job because uh, they're so busy. And uh, they make time. One of the one of the best things that I like about um, <clears throat> the mayor's youth council is see them just mingle and have a relationship with some of our elderly people. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've had some of our students in the past go out, and uh, Chris Chisholm was involved with that as well. Go out and help elderly people with yard work, and then also serve the seniors over at their senior luncheon. And uh, it does it does the, some of the elderly people really does their heart well by seeing these young people being involved and being able to spend time. And it does the young people um, well because they get to serve and they get to have, understand a different perspective from our senior citizens. So it's, it's, a, it's a really good program and uh, they've made a tremendous impact on the community. They are just, those young people are just great ambassadors uh, for this city to not only want to stay here and do well, but spread the word outside uh, to other people as they meet kids from other organizations, other schools, and you're right. I've seen them interact there over at the Senior Services uh, Center at those luncheons. And the stories, they just take in the stories from yeah. the uh, senior citizens that uh, you, you can't get that anywhere else. A direct knowledge of the past, mouth to word to word there. And it, it's just really heartening to see that. And the kids love it. Yeah, they do. They certainly do. All right. So we got a new Mayor's Youth Council 2021-2022. Uh, let's talk about all the schools are going back. I can't believe the school that the summer's over already. Uh, everybody's going back to school. Uh, I know Staten, Maggie, Kate, they're getting ready to go, had meet the teacher. Um, it's important for our folks to realize, one, we want to protect these kids. COVID aside, what the public can do, stop for those school buses. Please don't try and pass those school buses. We had a big problem with that last year. Yeah, so we actually have a, a dedicated person at the police department. So Stephen Webb, he's the director of uh, transportation for the school district. He works hand-in-hand -hand, uh, with Ricky Steen um, on um, on those particular incidents. So I don't know if people realize or not, but you know these school buses have cameras on them. And if you pass a school bus, when the stop sign's out, then you're subject to uh, a citation. And actually, the judge, and I just want to go this Take it a little further. Uh, judge Redfern, our municipal court judge, he's the one of the people that were intricate in um, drafting legislation for Nathan's Law when the young man was killed uh, in Richland uh, several years back. So he takes that very, very serious, which you should, uh, especially a child's life. Uh, you know, <clears throat> in this fast society that we live in, it, it doesn't take that long uh, 
to stay behind a school bus. I know that people want to try to get to work and things of that nature, but that one bad decision could cost someone their life. And uh, and, and I myself, uh, former law enforcement, I think it's very important that we enforce it on the other end. We're going to make sure that we do that. Um, I think um, it's important for me to make sure that I support the judge on this, and uh, I think it can uh, save lives. Oh, um, no doubt. And, you know, not only once the school bus is gone, be on the lookout, especially in those afternoons after kids have gotten home, when you're on your way home from work, um, you know, they got a lot of pent up stuff for me in the classroom all day. They may be playing ball out in the yard. Keep an eye out for them as they as you approach the curbs and, and the, uh, the yards. Yeah. Well, just don't speed. <laughs> That's don't easy. Speed. I mean, I, we get calls of continuing areas. We have a rotation of areas that we know that we're going to go to from a police department standpoint. Uh, it's about 26 streets that we know they're hot, they're hot places. And what we do is we just rotate units going to those areas. We know that this is, this is going to be a troublesome area. We're going to have people speeding. And, um, again, uh, you can slow down and especially when you're talking about in these neighborhoods and, um, life's not that serious to be able to do the speed limit, get home safely, be aware of your surroundings. That way you don't um, cause any type of injury to any other human being that might be on the street. So it just um, we're going to do our do what we need to do to enforce the law, continue to do that. Uh, but getting back to the kids and, and the school bus passing, there's no sense in that. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're really, we're, we're really going to take a hard line on it, continue to do so. Well, and in the grand scheme of things, if you think about it, honestly, as you're driving, What's 30 seconds? If it's 30 seconds more for you to get to where you're going, to stop, to go slower, to not speed, in the grand scheme of things, it's nothing. So yeah, I think no. you're, you're, you're spot on. Well, I do want to finish off on a really high note, um, kind of a 30,000-foot view that you can give to us. But, man, we got a great city financial audit report uh, last night that was presented <clears> to the board. And, man, it is amazing how far we've come. Yeah, it is. Uh, God's been really good to the city. Uh, our private auditor, which I just want to make sure that I explain this properly, uh, w- she is not in-house in the city. We have to hire a private auditor to come in and look at our internal municipal accounting. So she comes in when I first came into office, and I, I don't want to sit here and sing the sad song. I mean, it was definitely a, a situation where we were not doing well. as uh, a first year our audit was um, pre- because the audit goes into the rear. It doesn't go. It doesn't display the current year. Right. It so has last, to look back. That's right. Last night's audit was from 2020. Next year's will be 2021, and so on. So 16 was negative 924. Uh, 17 was positive 200. And then we've worked our way well from a negative 924,000. To last night's uh, fund balance um, was 6.2 million. So from negative 924,000 fund balance on our financial audit to a positive 6.2 amazing two million dollars. And I really, uh, I've said this before, but I credit that to the city employees that really had a lot of buy-in to understand what we needed to do to get healthy. And I think after we've done that, we've been able to provide the city services. We're going out. And you're going to see more streets getting paved uh, over this next couple of years. You're going to see them get paved in the city now. You're going to see the fire department getting provided more equipment. You're going to get police department fire uh, provided more equipment in our other city departments, which doesn't do anything but trickle down to our city citizens, provide more services and uh, being more efficient. And they can really see their tax dollars at work. And in the meantime, we're we're providing a, a very physical conservative approach to that. Uh, not trying to overdo, make sure that you have to do things in stages. I mean, you can't do everything at once, but uh, if you're going to um, manage your finances correctly. So I think that uh, our citizens will be seeing a, a, a even more of a drastic change the next four years than they currently see. Uh, the first two years, I mean, we were eating cheese and bologna crackers. <laughs> I mean, that's how it was. We had some spam, you know. We, yeah. we weren't we doing much. We were just trying to be efficient and provide – customer service but at this time uh, we're going to be able to do more and what we're what my main goal is is just to each aspect of uh, uh, of our departments in our community to to do things well 
uh, get on a maintenance program where it goes street paving, make sure that we're trying to knock out a lot of deteriorated streets right now. And then once you get to a situation where the, the streets that are most deteriorated, that are handled, um, then we will t be on a maintenance program. I mean, we, we keep up with, if, if people don't understand, we have a spreadsheet that, uh, that I'll just say my, my assistant, Kathy Bourgeois, she created. We have every street in the city on it. We know how, how long it is, how wide it is, and how many square yards of asphalt it takes to go into that street. And that way we can calculate the quantities and know how much it's going to cost for us to pave it. And so we go through there and um, we actually list in there what year it was paved. That way when, I, when I'm out of here, whether the Lord takes me or I retire, the other administration can come in and say, well, they did this on streets, they did this on water, they did this on sewer. We have it all on paper. And, um, and they said we, we provided... Uh, vehicles for the police department here, a new fire truck at this, a new fire station at this time, and and that type of organization just be created. I think, you know, in the IT department and communications department, it's already like that as well. Things have a, a systematic approach to good maintenance, which doesn't do anything but provide good government for our people. And that that's the ability uh, to really treat your folks right. That's what I think. Well, I will tell you that uh, for, the, for the people out there, the best comparison I can make to it is the city financial, the auditor came in and basically gave us a financial colonoscopy, much like the mayor does and the board of aldermen do with each of the city department heads. When they turn in their budgets, each uh, department head undergoes a financial colonoscopy because you take a close look at everything and if you see something that's not right, well, you might just have to snip it out. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> Some of our department heads have, have fell victim of uh, me cutting their budget <laughs> in certain areas, and it's, it's but they understood. I mean, because they, it's, they, it's they where know it's that going. they understand that they have an open mind, and we have department heads that uh, I, I'm get a little bit redundant with this, but I think that I'd put our department heads up against any department heads in the state of Mississippi um, on day to day. Uh, I, I really, I really feel confident about that. And they know what the goal is, and they maintain that. And then uh, a lot of them, most of them that I know of in their personal lives, they, they, they approach things the same way that we're approaching here in the city, and that's the way you got to live it out. Uh, so, yeah, we are going into budget season, and um, I'm proud to say that we're going to be coming in a little bit under last year's budget. We have some capital projects that we pushed out, and then we're going to have some more capital projects that uh, we'll move forward on this year. But it's always good to say that you can come down a little bit, but still do what needs to be done for your people. Outside of the budget, I want to explain something, too. Um, uh, we have the American Restore Act funds that are going to be dedicated towards water. If the board does approve that water comprehensive plan that we've discussed before, and we'll have some SRF funds from DEQ that were for sewer, um, that we're going to be uh, repairing old lines. Those are separate funds than what our city funds in. And then the road bond that we did, that's a separate fund. So all that doesn't come out of the general fund uh, at one time. And then two of those, the water and the sewer, they actually come out of utility. Uh, and I don't foresee infrastructure getting any cheaper. Uh, it's one of those things that it's like, a, uh, it's like having to renew a uh, license you're on the software every year. You're going to have to do it. If you want to stay up and you want to make sure that you're doing things correctly, you got to renew it. So you got to put money into the budget every year to uh, do the things that are necessary to keep up. That way you don't have things crumbling. Well, you guys are leveraging um, all the different pots of money out there so that it's not all coming out of our you know, main checking account. You're finding other sources and uh, man, just doing an, an awesome job. We thank you for coming in. Um, I guess it's now time for you to put on your homework cap because you got to get ready for state and maggie kate's uh yeah. homework after yeah. school so we try to knock it out in the afternoon at pirate care if we're and if not at pirate care it seems like sometimes it slips through the cracks and we're sitting at the kitchen table <laughs> at 6 a.m so you know how Gee, that goes i don't know what that is <laughs> yeah but hey look they're fired up about going back to school uh, they acted like they were not until they went and met their teachers yesterday and um you know, I was fired up too. On Monday, I was able to go and to the opening ceremonies there at the PAC. Dr. Morgino invited me up there and was able to say something to the teachers and administrators. And, I, and I'll say this, that basically what I told them was thank you. Thank you for all the hard work that you did in order to provide our children a proper education. No doubt. All the extra, all the extra things that no one would ever know and the extra stress and um, 
just trying to make sure that they ran a school district. And, uh, you know, it, it was just – I'm very grateful for them. Our school teachers, um, our principals, our superintendent, our school board, all those folks did a tremendous job to make sure that our kids uh, received the education that they needed. Well, and I'm we are very grateful. We are A rated because of those folks, and it, it's not by chance. It's because they do put in such hard work. Yep. Mayor, good luck with the school year. Yes, we sir. will talk to you again in a couple of weeks. Thank you, Greg. Have a good day. All right. We will have more this week in Pearl coming up right after this. Come find your taste buds at the Lost Cajun. Chef Charles is cooking everything to order. Cajun classics like gumbo, jambalaya, and red beans and rice. Pick your po' boy, shrimp, oyster, roast beef, or maybe gator. Proudly serving USDA farm-raised catfish. When you're done, loosen the belt up a bit for some homemade beignets. Dine in, take out, order online, and get it delivered. Reserve our party room for your group. Find your way to the Lost Cajun in Pearl and Byram. Welcome back into this week in Pearl. You know, the mayor had uh, just talked about it, and I think it's important for us to, to touch on again, and that is the school bus safety. You know, uh, it, it's unbelievable how many folks uh, actually pass the school buses, whether they're picking up or dropping off kids um, from school or going to school, and it's really become a problem, and we really don't want to see tragedy uh, occur. The mayor alluded to it that all these school buses now have cameras on them, and they're both forward-facing and backward-facing. Let me just give you a little tip. They're HD, so you can absolutely see your license plate if you go around a school bus. And they have that to take into court with them, so you can't say, oh, well, I didn't know or I didn't pass that school bus. They have you actually on camera. I'd like to take you back and show you a public service announcement that we created. Uh, just a little reminder from our Pearl Police Department about why they say it's important to not pass these school buses and some of the penalties that you will face. I'm Officer Kyle Carmerdale. And I'm Officer Alfred Jenkins, School Resource Officer with the Pearl Police Department. And our job is to protect students. Here in Pearl, we have zero tolerance for drivers that break school bus laws. There are four things to know. Stop at least 10 feet from the bus when it is loading or unloading. Don't move until kids have crossed the street to or from the bus. The flashing red lights are no longer activated. The stop sign on the side of the bus is retracted. When we catch you, you get a ticket up to $750, up to a year in jail, or both. Please pay attention so every student can get to school and home safe. So you definitely don't want to pass a school bus. It can not only be costly for you, your insurance rates will go up, you'll have to pay a big fine, but heaven forbid, you know, a small child is injured. Uh, you know, we owe it to them to be able to get them to school and home from school safely. And it's, it, it's just as simple as waiting behind that school bus. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk about some city events that are coming up, a new ribbon cutting, and some cool things to do coming up around here in the city of Pearl. So stay with us. This Week in Pearl continues right after this. WPBP and PMB-TV would like to thank our latest sponsor, Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts is located at 403 Riverwind Drive, with over 32 different types of donuts, they can take care of your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can now choose from their menu of sandwiches, wraps, and muffins. And don't forget the drinks. Along with coffee, espressos, and lattes for your morning drive, they also have soft drinks, cold brew coffees, and smoothies. The Pearl Pirates run on Dunkin' Donuts. Welcome back to This Week in Pearl. You know, we uh, are always proud of our businesses here, and the Pearl Chamber of Commerce does such a great job in promoting uh, all the businesses that become members of the chamber. Well, this week we had a ribbon cutting for the Snowbiz Coffee and Treats uh, little location at Patton Plaza, right there off of Old Brandon Road, down from the police department. So it is a, a great spot to stop for snacks, and you know it's great for kids, but it's also great for adults because they have certainly the snow cones for the kids. Uh, but coffee, which is always a great seller and some great treats so you can have the opportunity you know late afternoon uh, to swing by there after school early evening as you're on your way home from work to uh, pick up some snacks for the kids some coffee some snacks for yourself it is a really just a fun place to stop by they're open seven days a week from 10 a.m to 7 p.m and in a very easy location to get in and out of again right there off of uh, old brandon road at Patton plaza that's the snow biz coffee and treats 
Well, we're also very proud of the fun things we have to do here in the city of Pearl. And while summer is winding down with back to school, man, baseball is still hopping. A little time before football season, but our M Braves are right back in town. They've been on the road for two weeks, and they continue to be in first place in the AA South. And they're going to be coming home to take on our rivals, the Biloxi Shuckers, who, whew, man, I tell you what, two weeks ago, we had a rough time against those Shuckers. They swept us. So the M Braves are going to be looking for revenge and a chance to expand that lead in the AA South. They'll be back home on Tuesday the 10th against those Biloxi Shuckers. Tuesday, as always, is Bark in the Park. You can bring your pooch out there. They get in for free as long as you buy a ticket. On Wednesday, it is First Responders Day. All first responders, police, fire, uh, military, medical professionals, all get in for free with a guest as long as you show your ID. They're at the ticket window. Great way to honor all of our first responders. That's on Wednesday the 11th. Uh, Thursday, very, very popular day. It's Thirsty Thursday, and they have live trivia out in the Farm Bureau Grill where you can uh, win an opportunity to uh, have a suite for free uh, at another home game during the season. Man, you can't beat that. Play some live trivia out there from 6 to 7, then settle in and watch the ball game. But Thirsty Thursday, where they have the $2 soft drinks and beer drafts, very, very popular. Friday night, man, get there early. They're going to have the Christian Pache bobblehead, one of the hottest prospects in all of Major League Baseball. He's uh, currently at AAA Gwinnett, uh, but he's had a taste in Atlanta of playing in the outfield there for the Big Braves. Uh, they're going to be giving away his bobblehead from the Mississippi Braves. So first thousand fans in line are going to get a Christian Pache bobblehead. Uh, first pitch that night is 635 and the gates will open at 530. So you want to get lined up just a little bit early to make sure that you can get that Christian Pache bobblehead giveaway. Uh, on Saturday the 14th, it's going to be a fireworks night. You know, we can never get too much fireworks and what a great show they put on there at the Trustmark Park. And then again on the 15th, Sunday afternoon game, 205 first pitch. Kids run the bases. It is Sunday family fun day. Lots of fun things happen for the kids, for the families. It's just a, a great way to spend an afternoon when you get out of church. Come watch some baseball and then let those kids run the bases. It's a great experience that they won't forget as they go around Trustmark Park on a professional baseball field. So that's just a couple of things for you to do. Uh, ribbon cutting to the business. Congratulations there to Snowbiz. And be sure to go out and support our Mississippi Braves. We'll wrap up this week in Pearl right after this. Hello, I'm Mayor Wyndham, and I'm thrilled to show you the city creating its own future. Pearl is located in Rankin County, the fastest growing county in Mississippi, and there's no question why. Access to great schools, even better shopping, and unbridled beauty make Pearl a town that truly embodies its name. And with a truly exceptional team of first responders, public safety is another key component of our success. With fantastic housing opportunities from quaint suburban neighborhoods to gorgeous lakefront properties, there's a place for you here in Pearl. You can't beat the location. Right outside of Pearl is the crossroads of the south where Interstate 20 meets Interstate 55. From here you can travel anywhere within the state or the country. Or you can choose to stay right here in Pearl to enjoy a Mississippi Braves baseball game or experience the small town atmosphere community pride and heart of the local residents. Well, you know, you could stay connected to all the happenings going on in Pearl simply by following us on one of many different avenues. Now, first place, if you want to get city text alerts, all you have to do is text uh, the word Pearl to 91896. That's the word Pearl to 918. 9, 6, and you'll get all of the city alerts and text messages that we send out to keep you up to date right there on your text messaging system. Uh, text rates do apply, but uh, you can sign up and get those alerts anytime you want simply by texting uh, the word Pearl into that number. Cityofpearl.com, a great resource. The website, we keep news and notes. If you have any questions about the city, you can find the answer to that. It is new and improved. We encourage you to go to cityofpearl.com to get a lot of your questions answered. And of course, we're on social media because we are all social people. Uh, we are on every platform uh, that is most popular out there. We're on Facebook, Twitter, 
and on Instagram. Simply look for City of Pearl Government on all three of those sites and you can get those updates and see photographs that we post of board meetings, things going on around town, traffic alerts, everything you need to know to be a great citizen of Pearl. So stay connected and stay with us. Until next time, I'm Greg Flynn. And remember, folks, the city of Pearl is a great place to live, work, and play as we are the jewel of the crossroads. Music